When you look at the statistics, it seems everything is in favour of the pretty boy from England, Mike Hales. He is younger, taller and has the perfect record when compared to his American opponent. But Taylor proved against Dean Barry that the underdog can have his day. Will he upset the odds again here tonight and send another favourite crashing out? We go to our MC, Buddy Johnson, to announce the battle of the pretty boys. Live from York Hall, we present our uh, two of our main events of the evening. This, the first of our two main events of the evening. Three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. I'm on the live on ITV4, partnered by RDX.com and 32red.com and CoinGeek.com. Now, we introduce first the blue corner. He stands five feet, seven inches tall and has a combat weight of 151 pounds, even holding a professional record of three wins against five defeats from Alameda, California, USA, presenting Anthony Pretty Boy Taylor. And now across the cage in the right corner, standing five feet, nine inches tall. He weighed officially at 150 pounds, even an undefeated professional record, five career wins, fighting out of Canvey, England, presenting Mike Pretty Boy Hills. When the action begins, your referee in charge, Mr. Rich Mitchell. So, Chris, we have as our co main event the battle of the pretty boys and in one corner as we said an unbeaten fighter with everything it seems in his favor but you and i have both seen his opponent anthony taylor and he's fought at the highest level and anthony taylor has talked an awful lot of smack he said if you kick i'm going to take you down and use that wrestling if you want to stand and throw hands like a man i'm happy to, to oblige hales though i think it's key that he uses the kickboxing he was a kickbox before he began mma at 20. he's young in the game he's undefeated but he's got to set up those kicks with intelligence now we also said that taylor he's durable he can take the shot he's flamboyant and again look at this straight away the takedown and in his last bout let's be honest dean barry was really highly rated on his debut and he took him out and the crews and the training partners taylor trains with antonio mckee aj mckee and pico Alyssa are really good wrestlers so in California, he said, I put in a pretty short camp, but it was a good camp. I'm ready to go in there and press the grappling if I have to. The big question was, how long would it take before he did so? The answer, not long. And here's the other thing. We talked about highly anticipated strikers. That's what Dean Barry was. And Taylor did exactly this. Take down, pass guard, force the back, and look for that rear naked choke. But the thing about Hales is, he's been working really hard too. A couple of fights ago, he went from Essex to the Republic of Ireland, to SVG, to one of the best gyms in the world. So, trying to enter John Cavanaugh, he said, I've gone from strength to strength, I've trained better and harder than ever before, and I'll be well prepared for anything to the table. So, nearly got up twice there, but the reshot from his opponent and Taylor is exceptional. And it's not the first attempt at the takedown now, it's everything that comes after it. And you and I were talking before this, and you said he's like a real bulldog tailor for the takedown. You said people underestimate his strength, people underestimate his durability. And again, I looked at you said he trains at the highest level, let alone fights at the highest level. That's also been a key ingredient for Hales if you ask him about his improvements, though. He said, I actually blagged my way into the pro class at SPG. John Kavanaugh took me in the back in the office afterwards and said, Why don't you join the team? A couple months later, he's got selfies with Conor McGregor, so I think that speaks volumes about his commitment. But tonight, I think it will be undoubtedly the toughest test of his MMA career. And again, Chris, you talk about selfies. This has been so perfect because both these men in the pre-fight build-up were on about their Instagram supporters, their pretty boy looks. But Taylor is pulling on the pressure here, Chris. Hales went up with the legs there, looking for that triangle choke, but Taylor's squaring up beautifully here. You can see from her angle, it'll kind of follow the hips. Every single time Hales moves backwards or shift to the side, he's going to make sure he stays flush to him here, just over the midway point of the round. Taylor on top. This is big. And again, Chris, look at the reverse of the coin with all the talk that's gone on before. What about the reversal with Hales with that training with SPG if he got the submission against Taylor? Yeah, that'd be a real feather in his cap. Which Mitchell, I think, is going to stand him up here. Not enough activity.
Not sure what happened there. There was obviously a foul. Rich Mitchell was clearly unhappy with something. I couldn't tell from our angle on the monitor what occurred. He was pointing to Anthony Taylor's shoulder twice. Oh, he's gonna take a point. But maybe the fact that he wasn't gonna listen to his instructions. You gotta follow my instructions at all times. That's one of the first things a referee will tell you. Spin attack there from Ailes. That was lazy though, you gotta set that up. Taylor just ducked underneath him, pulled away the base, and dumped him down. You've also got to love the way Taylor shrugged, accepted the point deduction, and immediately went straight back to the takedown to get in exactly the same position. Your fingers are That's how confident he head. is at the moment. Yeah, he knew, I think, in the run-up to this, that he was going to have to use the wrestling. He might have told his opponent in Hales that he was willing to stand, but that was all an illusion. Psychological warfare was huge in this. You're right, and now Hales is back on the bottom again. But I mean, what happens if, if he gets the triangle? Yeah, he's looking for a good setup here. He thought about playing rubber guard, pulling that right leg high. But Taylor knows this game. That's the thing, he's got so much ring time. He's headlined multiple shows in Europe. He's a big guy for the weight class. And when he's on top, he's at home. And we have to stress, when you see him afterwards out of the cage, the man is crazy funny. He's such a flamboyant character. After his last bam about, he had everyone in stitches with his antics after the win. And the thing is, though, when you tell a guy you're going to do something, and then you do something different, I think that's really intriguing. Because he was setting it, that he'd be happy to throw hands, and he didn't even think about it. He went straight for that level change. Which is something we anticipated. And what made this intriguing for us was how Hells would react to that. Surely SPG will know that, say, they'll say to him, forget that, this is what Taylor's going to do, be prepared. And he certainly was. But now Taylor's in a good spot here, he's staying active enough. Rich Mitchell will be watching to make sure he's, you know, working to improve position or score meaningful and impactful shots. Spinning attack from Hales again, though, he's going to look for that far side armbar, Malk. 10 seconds to go. Can he convert? He's got to get that right leg over the top of the head, but Taylor's base is so strong here. It's going to be tough to finish, especially when you're up against the cage. You don't have the ability to run an active guard like you'd normally be able to in the middle of space. But Hales proved the point. The fact that he was willing to look for that and capable of that says everything, Chris. At the end of the day, it shows that Hales is still there despite being on his back. That said, big round from this moment for Taylor, surely. So let's take a look at it here. Taylor was able to get the pick up, throw the legs to the side. That's the best way to take someone down, is get that flare, try to dump him and pass him doing so. More top control from Taylor. That was what he warned about. That was it. I was having some difficulty seeing from the angle that we had at the time, but clearly he was not happy. Rich Mitchell made it very, very clear about the head positioning. You're not allowed to obviously do that in MMA and headbutt. That's an infraction, but where that type of stuff is legal is you can use you know, solid head pressure. And TPing up in the guard like that to pin your opponent down is a completely viable tactic. So clearly Taylor got a little bit over anxious and uh, well, Rich Mitchell wasn't a happy camper, but it starts on the feet in round two. So round two, of potential three coming up. And Taylor waves over to Hales. All the trash talk beforehand It's just two warriors in there now. And they go to touch gloves again. And Chris, Hales will want to keep this up right. What's he going to look for to stop Taylor coming in? Because at will, Taylor got those takedowns in the opening round. He's got to stick and move. He's got to make sure he's not a stationary target, doesn't step in too far on these trades. Kick selectively and set up those kicks because, frankly, the last time he got taken down, he went for a 360 degree technique and didn't even set it up. Real easy. Taylor will see that coming, get that level change just like that. And also, when you are moving and striking, don't get your back up to the fence because clearly, Taylor has the ascendancy here. Look at that. Passes like butter. And Chris, as you said before, when you looked at Taylor the first time, before we commentated on him for the very first time, you said, that's a wrestler's physique. He's doing a good job here, trying to step over, get that mounted crucifix. Hales turns in, recovers a half guard position. Taylor again trying to pin and work that right arm of Hales down to the canvas. And he's going to punch and stay busy the whole time. This is what we saw prior to getting that point deducted in his top control. And he's going to have 
because of that point production, a really big, not just a good round, a dominant round here, and he's looking for that from the start. It's good tactics from the American, but as we saw against Barry as well, he's patient in the setup. He'll work you and work you until the opportunity comes. There's that head pressure again. He basically wants to be as deep as possible. By that, I mean several things. Number one, not only his head position, but when he catches an underhook. There we go, beautiful. He's looking to step over and pass. See him fighting for the underhook on the right side? He wants that as deep as possible. And that will allow him to pressure pass. Good head pressure again from Taylor. And these are short shots. These are annoying shots. They're not going to stop the fight, per se, but they're going to allow him to open up for the pass. And that's part of mixing, mixing striking in MMA and the grappling. Just another point here as well. You said training with SBG. He'll be in this position, but he's never been in this position in a real battle. He's finished opponents quickly. He's finished them upright. It's one thing to train it. What's it to be in the cage with your opponent like this in a real battle? He's in a bad position right now. He's in real danger of this one being stopped. He's got to keep working. Watch the forehead. Rich Mitchell is obviously going to make sure he keeps a good angle here and keep a solid vantage point. But the problem is for Hales is he's trying to work that Z-guard position. He's trying to frame up in this half-guard position. He can sweep, he can do certain things, but right now he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. And as you said, that Taylor slips back in again, gets back there, and starts those punches coming again. As you said, they're not necessarily concussive, but it's the sheer volume coming through now from the American. Yeah, and Rich Mitchell will be making an assessment. He'll be looking for intelligent defense, and obviously for Hales to work to improve his position. And I'll make an assessment of not only what happens in the immediate moments that he may call a finish, but everything that's happened up until that point. Good short punches here from Taylor. He's staying busy enough. It's not the most exciting thing, but it's an efficient way of winning, especially against a guy who's a pretty good kickboxer in Hales. And a guy that he will look at his record and say, well, he's 5-0, oh, it's all stoppages. I'm not going to give him that opportunity against me. And he faced a similar situation with Dean Barry when everybody was telling him, this guy is so vicious on top. He's so good, but these punches coming through, Chris. Hales has to do something about them here. Yeah, it's not going to be enough to win the fight by guard. He's got a good close guard here. That's better than where he was before. But Taylor's staying busy. And he's scoring. And he's working just enough to avoid being stood up. And oh, those Mitchell, are big shots. He's big looking shots close now, Taylor. Chris. He is looking close now, Rich Mitchell, Chris. You can see Hales try to explode. And he knows that he's got to keep working. It's one of those things that you draw in the gym. It's not getting in positions and accepting them. So we're approaching the last minute of the second round. And despite the point deduction, it's been a torrid time for Mike Hales. 5-0 before coming into this. But Taylor set out the stall, and he is so dogged in the way he keeps you there. And the way, as you said, Chris, he stays so close to you. Yeah, he's shutting down those hips every single time. There's no space. Short punches to the body. But then suddenly he'll posture up and really throw the heavy rights as well. And that's when Rich Mitchell comes in very close to have a look. It's been good refereeing from Rich Mitchell. Oh, that's the back take. That's what he would have wanted. Short choke. Taylor looking for that choke. Great explosion from Hales. The crowd loving it here in London. 20 yep. seconds. They realized the danger that Hales was in and the way he got out of it. Here's the double leg. And look at Hales going with those elbows to defend and stay upright. And his supporters suddenly come to life in the last 10 seconds and realize there's still more to this bout. And obviously going into the third now. Hales is a survivor. That was huge. He got back up. He avoided the worst of it. I mean, yes, Taylor was able to take him down, but he survived the round. He gets back to his feet. He's got to make this one count. This next five, back, this next five minutes are going to be key. And Chris, this was the thing. We knew what Taylor was going to do. He went for it, he got it. And for a full period of that round, he was in control, ground and pound, staying close to him, never giving him any space, working him. And then finally, we saw this in his Bama 34 victory. That's exactly the same setup. He went choke first. He had a couple of different options off that, but the thing is, Hales was really able to come through the adversity, show a lot of heart and grit, and get back up, writing down some good elbows. you got to wonder what his corner's telling him here. I mean, clearly he's down. There was a point deduction, but I still think he's down in this contest at this point. He needs a big round. There's another variable here, though, Chris, and the fact that all credit to him, all his previous bouts, first round stoppages, he's now going into the third round. 
with a machine here and he's still looking particularly fresh so although he's never gone the distance he's certainly trained for it for this bag third and final rounds here at the york hall coming to you london from bama an amazing evening headlined by that big super fight coming up next at the moment we've got the battle of the self-professed pretty boys here and for the first time taylor hinting that he's going to stand up and trade i don't believe that for a second chris yeah i was looking for that level change the reshot is huge again it's that chain wrestling look at that beautiful head inside single try to get the trip couldn't get it goes double gets the pickup he's always got several options after it gets him underneath you and that's the difference it's not the most exciting thing but in mma it's all about coming up with something your opponent doesn't have an answer to and that's been the difference for taylor here that's right against a very accomplished striker he's negated all that kept it close kept it tight kept working his man taylor's been like an octopus on hells sucking him in keeping him there and he doesn't let go of these submissions or well of this grappling push he just he'll keep for that leg till he gets where he wants to be He's so active the way he does it. There, a look of frustration, that says it all. Yes, you look at Mike Hale's corner there, there's nothing they can do to, to stop this man here. And he did it in the second, and he's prepared to stay there. Let's look at one thing here that needs to be addressed. Taylor's cardio for this sort of performance, Chris. Yeah, it's important. Unless you've been there and done it, you don't realize the kind of energy that it takes. Especially after coming in during fight week, cutting weight, you gotta get everything correct. Taylor's been able to keep up just enough activity to keep this fight where he wants it. He's won the positional exchanges, and he's used his grappling with intelligence and fought to the best opportunities he could create. Again, lots of head pressure, shuffles, follows the hips. Every single time Hales tries to reset, they'll shut him down. He makes his weight work for him and floats really good here. Yes, the pretty boy in dominant style here. Superb cardio, working Mike Hales off his back the whole three rounds no chance to get off any big kicks or punches for the englishman who's five and oh before this used to putting people away but we did say in the build-up chris he stepped up a level to be fair to him this man when you look at his record it might not be brilliant but then when you look who and where he's fought it all falls into place hills is working but it's not going to be enough to win this round. And we are halfway through and just under now this round. Hells needs to find a way somehow to get back upright. He hinted just once in the previous round at maybe looking for the triangle. He's got to do something here because the clock is just ticking again. And that frustration, his corner, we saw clearly he will feel at the end of this if he doesn't do something now. There we go, there's this pressure pass. Taylor's gonna look to try to open up here. That guard was open for the pass. Hales then closes back up and locks his ankles. This is a good defensive position for Hales. He's avoiding anything significant to the head. And there, he was thinking about setting up a triangle choke or something, but that's a big ask, especially when he's pinned up like this. It's not the most exuberant or flamboyant performance from Taylor. And when you listen to him smack talk, you might accept uh, expect the uh, opposite, but he's clearly studied Hales, he knew he was up against him, and he's fighting and sticking to the game plan to the team. And he's turning his career around again. Two wins on the spin. That's important because, as I said, we look at his record, it, it, it's not it, it's three wins, five losses, but suddenly he brings that back with another win, and people start looking at him and thinking, yes, the man's back in the game. And we're inside the last minute, Chris, and Hales has really been stifled here. Taylor keeps working here. I'd like to see him stand and pass or try something different. I mean, he might be tired right now. Maybe he was carrying some injuries into this bout. Only he knows. There's an awful lot that can happen in this sport, but I'd like to see him stand up. I'd like to try to see him work a pass a different way here, but clearly he's happy enough to try to fight for this bicep pump we saw him patrolling there a minute ago. Just keep punching, keep working. We're inside the last 30 seconds. He's done the business, he's done the job. He's ignored the crowd. He stifled Hales, he stifled the crowd. He's taken the energy out of him. He's doing a job here and he's doing a professional job as befits his experience. Let's get that straight. 
Yeah, all you can do in this sport is win the rounds and win them the best way you can. So we're coming to the end of the final round here, Chris. It's going to go to the decision. Who has won the Battle of the Pretty Boys? We'll be right back with Buddy Johnson to find out. Inside the cage, this bout goes the distance three rounds, and we go to your judge's decision. Our judges scored about 29, 27, 26, 29, 26, and 29, 26. Declare your winner by unanimous decision, Anthony Pretty Boy Taylor.